Good morning, everyone. Buongiorno. Ciao. Hola. It's me. I'm back again to annoy you with my positive attitude and happiness. Plus, I'm here to give you some happiness. So I'll hope you will you will take something out of it. So. So, I'm here to talk about movies that feels like joy, happiness, pureness, fun, and serotonin. I didn't figure out the title yet, but basically happy movies. Happy movies that feel like magic also. Happiness and magic. You can call me your tutor in happiness and magic. I can be like your private witchcraft teacher. So I recommended you before some cute books to read that feel like happiness and magic. And here I will talk about movies. Cause we all know not everyone likes to read books but everyone would like to be happy so. <laughs> You probably don't know that about me yet, but I love movies so much. I am extremely interested in uh, cinematography, animation. In general, I love, I love, love, love movies. So let's just start about, so let's just start. Let's talk about cuteness and magic. Number one, we have the movie, the movie. I also talked about uh, a book of a movie. That was so ungrammatically correct. Let me do this again. And also I need to change it a little bit because I'm annoyed. Okay, so the first movie is Owl's Moving Castle. Yay! I don't want to start with like a basics because Owl's Moving Castle is a very popular movie, but I needed to include something from Ghibli. I needed to, and this one felt just right. I picked this one because because I highly want to underline how amazing Ghibli movies make me feel like. I picked this one not only because it's extremely beautiful and filled with joy, magic, happiness, and love, and mystery, but also because of the characters that are so amazingly created here. Along their story, we attach to them, we get to know them, uh, we have fun with them, we, have, we feel happiness with them, we feel sadness with them. The characters in this movie are so amazingly built that I felt for every single one of them. But, but the movie in general uh, follows a story of a girl named Sophie. A young girl who has been cursed because of the evil witch. She put a spell on her, changing her into an old lady. So Sophie not really knowing what to do. So she's just like, I can just leave and have an adventure on my own. She just leaves. She sets on a journey. And then accidentally finds herself a magical castle, house, moving castle, as you probably know. But again, the characters were so pure and gorgeous in the movie. I loved every single one of them. There's Howl, of course, of course. There's Sophie. She's just so sweet, so pure, and so gentle, kind, but also as this old woman, she is so cute. And she makes me smile every single time when I watch the movie or read the book. There's Calcifer, a demon. There's this young boy who is house uh, student, which is also so cute. I love how the relationship between them grows and I just really love the movie. It's every time it fills me with love and happiness and magic. Magic is essential here, so if you do like magic, make sure to watch this movie. Number two, we have Fantastic Mr. Fox. House Moving Castle uh, was, by the way, made by um, Hayao Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki. Ah, yeah, yeah, Miyazaki by Miyazaki. <laughs> Number two, Fantastic Mr. Fox by one and only. Wes Anderson. I love, I love Wes Anderson. He is one of my favorite directors. Not a favorite one though. I will talk about my favorite one later. But I'm so in love with the aesthetics of his movies. In love. I love how colorful they are, how beautiful and gorgeous they are. I love how funny the movies are. I love how charismatic and interesting characters are. Particularly in Mr. Fox, I love the relationship between the characters. I love the idea of family, of community. It was just hilarious. Every time I watch it, I like find myself full of joy. The movie follows a story of Mr. Fox and their family. Mr. Fox wants to provide them with good life, so he decides to move out to a bigger house in a tree, in this huge, huge tree. He moves there, ignoring the warnings of his lawyer about the danger of this area. It is caused because of three crazy farmers. Not farmers. Yeah, I think they're all like farmers, but they're like bougie farm farmers. <laughs> we have Bogus, a chicken farmer. Boons, Bounce, I'm not sure how to how to spell it. He's a duck farmer. And Bean, who is a apple farmer, and he has this apple setter. Cedar? Setter. 
basically. And also, taking the advantage of this fact, Mr. Fox decides to plan an attack. The robbery. The robbery of his life to steal from those three men. Again, it was just so brilliant. It's so colorful and so hilarious. Like the idea of family, how, you know, Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox talk to each other and to their son. It's just so funny and so relatable. I love when animals are relatable. I love those sort of situations. Oh, if you want to know something about foxes, me and my boyfriend, we have this comic. I didn't even know about that. I literally forgot about that. We have this comic about Elliot. Elliot is our fox. He's a teenager uh, and he is confused. Yeah, I'm gonna post it somewhere here. You can check it out. Like a comic about Elliot and his friends. There's um, uh, Bennett there, his best friend, Panda. But, but we, we're not talking about this. I just remember about this and wanted to recommend that to, to you. But I was saying, I love how animals have those human feelings. It just makes everything so funny and hilarious and even more relatable for some reason. So, fantastic Mr. Fox, go see it. And then we have Edward Scissorhands by Tim Barton. And yes, Tim Barton is my love of my life. Tim Barton is Neil Gaiman of cinematography. For me, for me, for me. I'm sorry if I'm getting too excited, but um, the same, like the love I have for, for Neil and for Tim it's like very similar but different because, you know, here we talk about books and here we talk about movies but I picked Edward Scissorhands not because it's funny or full of positive energy because it's rather, it, it's extremely pure, beautiful and kind but it's rather sad movie but I somehow I find it so happy because of the kindness and pureness of the main character just because of how beautiful the movie is constructed I do feel this joy while watching it every time because it's just so aesthetically pleasing and not only this but the character of Edward is so pure and so kind that I, it just fills my heart with pureness. I know there are phrases that I say a lot, like fill my heart with pureness, feeling joy and happiness, but like that is literally what I feel and even though the movie is not like, you know, funny, it's not a comedy, I do feel very happy watching it is because I love, I love to see good people in movies. I don't like watching, you know, bad things happening to good people, but... <laughs> Well, the movie just beautifully shows the delicacy, delicacy, delicate, maybe delicate attitude of Edwards and just his sensitiveness to the world and his unawareness. It's just gorgeous. It's just very sweet. So, oh yeah, uh, the plot. <laughs> the plot. I need to tell you the plot. <laughs> so the movie follows a story of Edward who has scissors instead of his hands because of something that you will see in the movie. He is found alone, scared by himself, by this very kind woman that takes him into her household. So he sort of becomes part of her family. And the movie just beautifully shows how Edward has to sort of understand the world. Even though sometimes it is cruel, still how Edward was formed by Johnny was extraordinary and just fills me with joy every time I see it. And number four. Number four we have Educating Rita by Louis is Gilbert. It's so cute. This movie is just so cute. This is another very funny, witty movie that will just make you laugh and smile. It is not only extremely funny, but also very, very smart, if you ask me. Because it follows the story of Rita, 26 year old hairdresser. She's very sweet and kind and pure hearted woman, but she is not satisfied with her life. She wants to be well educated. She wants to learn, but she does not have opportunities to. She's extremely dissatisfied with her life, with her social life, with her work, with her possibilities. So she decides to attend a open university course in English literature. I recommend that. I mean, English literature, I recommend to you, to everyone, honestly. I studied English, by the way, if you... Well, now when I'm uh, recording this video, I'm still studying, but I'm just writing my BA thesis. So I'm just finishing. I'm like one month, month blah, blah. I'm like one month finish it. But I will be probably done with that already when you see this, so. So she basically finds a tutor, tutor, and he's not very convinced about teaching her because he sees in her this sort of very simple, very basic kind of girl. So later, when he agrees to teach her, the relationship evolves. He notices Dirita's willingness to learn. They both become very fond of each other. 
they become very close they sort of accompany each other in this journey in self-development and I loved it I loved how characters will introduce to us here again because we have you know the the character of Rita who is very witty very funny and she wants to become educated and we have you know uh, the uh, her tutor her teacher who is extremely smart down-to-earth sort of man and they then they just exchange their energy and it's beautiful to see how um, how they impacted each other's life so I loved it it, it beautiful speaks about you know the idea of femininity um, of what women can do, what they should do, and I loved, I loved it so much. It was just so cute. I love the character of Brita. She was very sweet, and it was a beautiful movie. It was a beautiful movie. <laughs> Number five, Quatro, 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 Quatro. We have Sound of Music by Robert Wise. A beautiful and touching film. What can I say? Beautiful, simple, touching. And oh, one, there's one more thing. Julie Andrews. Give me anything with Julie Andrews and I'm sold. <laughs> she is so cute. She's just so pure and sweet that I just wanna hug her every time I see her. Because of that, the whole movie just feels so pure and full of joy. <laughs> well, she is the center of the story. And the story, my dear, uh, follows a character, obviously, <laughs> who is a nun. And fortunately, because of her attitude and willingness to explore and have fun, she cannot become part of the church community, even though she wants to. Just her attitude and her energy is does not quite fit. She finds it hard to adapt there but she strongly wants to be there. She wants to be a nun, she wants to feel connected to God, but she just does not fit there. <laughs> so, she is sent by the church to this widower to become a um, nanny for his children. Okay, okay. Our heroine is faced with many difficulties because the children, while are pretty evil creatures, she finds it hard to fit there too because of the man's attitude towards her. He's very down-to-earth, cold-hearted, unsensitive, and well, of course, there are those children, many children. Nevertheless, our heroine manages to win the heart of the household. She becomes very close with the children. She shows them the beauty of the world, um, the beauty of happiness, the beauty of experiencing life and she just literally wins their heart with her pureness and kindness and this movie was wonderful it was like summer in a pill summer in a pill I'm sure that it will give you happiness too plus it's a musical by the way I mean nature, Julie Andrews, plus musical damn <laughs> that's like a whole package number six Number six, we have a B movie. That's the first, no, not, it's not a first animation, the second animation. So, I feel like this one doesn't really need an explanation. I mean, it's a movie about bees. It's a bee movie. If that doesn't feel like happiness and joy and serotonin, I don't know what does. I love bees. I love them and they make me feel like summer and happiness. I don't know why. Maybe you don't like bees and that would be fine too, but I love I'm not gonna get too much in the plot because I suppose you know the movie. But the story follows a bee named Bari. Bari? Bari? He wishes to know the world. He wants to explore. He wants to find his way in life away from home. So he flies away when he has opportunity to and he gets involved in world by talking to a human and he starts a relationship with a human and later on he takes part in this in this in this political struggle to obtain the rights to honey which the bees work so hard on and which is simply taken away from them it is very briefly i love this movie it's hilarious it's funny the dialogues is hilarious. It makes me smile 24-7. Not 24-7. It makes me smile through all the movie. I love the characters. I think every single one of them adds something cool to it. I love Barry, Bade, whatever. I love Vanessa. She's so cute. There's even Ken, whom I don't like, but he definitely adds something to the story. <laughs> the movie is hilarious and I promise you it will raise your mood like that. Number seven! Woo! Number seven, everyone! Number seven is... 
Enchanted! You must know, I just had to include that here. I just had to. I find this movie a beautiful mixture of funny, whimsical, magical, pure, just everything. Fairy tales, magical. It's not only a movie that is, you know, that feels like a fairy tale, but it's literally a comedy plus a romance. Come on. Plus we have here the sweetness of Amy Adams and, well, the little perfection of Patrick Dempsey. What else? What else? What else can you want? I don't want nothing more, okay? The story follows a beautiful and sweet girl who lives in this sort of fairyland uh, place and she she's being sent to the other world, our world, which is full of sadness and reality and misery and misery. <laughs> And she finds herself in this world and she has to survive it somehow. And I love the movie. I love how pure and sensitive and unaware Amy Adams' character is. It's just so beautiful. And the romance in the movie, the triangle, is so cute and so beautiful. It's very funny but still magical. It's it's a comedy but still feels like a fairy tale, which I love. It gives me happiness every time I watch it, so. Well, my sweet, sweet people, that would be it. I had seven great movies you can watch to feel happy. Happy. And honestly, I hope you did find something here because my only reason is to make you feel happy So please tell me if you did find it interesting because literally the reason I do those videos is to give people pure and happiness because I Somehow I want to make world a happier place. So I just want to create this community of you know magic and positive energy so let me know if you have seen these movies if you want to see it if you have any other recommendation i would love to know that too and let's just talk to each other let's just you know let's just do it <laughs> thank you so much i still need to do thumbnail i need to be quick because uh, my camera will die so thank you <laughs> bye and now time for a thumbnail <laughs>